Good everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. Um, so I'll be starting a new certifications series that's a platform developer too. Um, so what I'm gonna do, you know, I'm gonna go through the trailhead like usual, right? If you're if you have uh, watched my um, platform developer one or a platform app builder, you would know that this is the way I cover and I've decided to do it for free, right? Because I thought, why not, right? Because platform developer uh, two is pretty amazing, and you know I've been a developer most of my life, so I thought you know why not share my knowledge with the rest of the world. Okay, so before you jump into platform developer two, you, you gotta worry about a few prerequisites, right? So the first thing, you need to have a platform developer one. If you do not have a platform developer one, then I would highly encourage you to go and prepare for platform developer one because you can't take uh, platform developer two without having platform developer one it makes sense right because platform developer one covers a lot of things which you should know before you attempt platform developer two i've built an entire series on platform developer one you can go and check it out right if you're interested okay so what we do we're going to look at the exam guide today and the things you know we're going to cover okay that's pretty much is today's topic i'm not going to get into the nitty-gritty aspect of the each of the re, you know things today but as we get along go along with the course right over the course of time we will be covering you know individual components in more details okay let's look at the exam guide right? this is the first thing you should all do whenever you or appear for if you only wanted to prepare for any kind of sales for certification or for that matter any of the technology right could be an Azure could be AWS or Google whatever okay so this is the uh, page which you should be referring to uh, don't worry about it I'll put the link in the description below anyways okay so it talks about you know the things which you should know and one thing i just wanted to mention that this is you know this exam comprises of two parts one is the multiple choice question and another is the four super badges which is very important um so apex specialist data integration specialist or a component specialist and advanced apex specialist right so um that's uh one of the thing you should be doing it i mean you can take the uh, exam in any order you can take the multiple choice first or you can take this for super batch first, which or uh, you're comfortable with, right there's no uh you know prerequisite that you have to take uh the super batch first before you um take the multiple choice or the vice versa right okay so you can go to the trailhead and start working on it if that's what you wanted uh, I won't be talking about the Apex uh, covering the super badges. I'm only focusing on entire course content. But that being said, right, once you finish the course, if you have a question around super badges, you can always, you know, let me know. I can help out whenever I can. Okay, so the audience, which is very important part, right? Because obviously you need to know, uh, you know, whether you are eligible to prepare for, uh, to appear for the certification, right? Okay, so they clearly mentioned that it's in, intended for an individual who has experienced developing custom application on Lightning Platform. That means to say you should be very fairly confident on Apex side of things. You know, LWC, um, Aura is kind of an old technology, but you know they still know. Uh, Visual Force page is good to know as well. But although I don't recommend building any new product on Visual Force, um, you know it's it's good to build on LWC, more flexible, you know, it's it's mobile ready, right? And that's the future, right? So, but that being said, they might test you around on, L, you know, Visual Force page as well. Okay, so they expect you need to have the skills, you know, you need to have a skill around Salesforce data modeling, which is obvious, which is, in my opinion, that even for PD1, you should have this one, right? Interface design code development obviously you know should know how to code right because this is a platform developer too it's and testing you know coding and testing which is very important when it comes to you know sales for space because especially around the testing right you should know how to write a better test cases and you know how to write a better code right organize your code you know separation of concern all of this you know all these things you should know 
Okay, and is capable of defining appropriate solutions to meet specific business challenge, process requirement, uh, customize the platform, applying knowledge of declarative and programmatic features of Lightning Platform, which is important. So, as a developer, right, it doesn't matter if you're if you're a developer or it could be a technical architect. It doesn't matter. It's your responsibility to to take the business requirement and convert that requirement into a solution, right? Or to build a functionality around the business requirement. So it's up to you to know when to use the code and when not to use the code, right? So um, is competent in developing Apex code. Like I said, you should have a fairly good understanding with Apex to the large data set, right? What happens when you deal with, you know, massive data set, whether you're gonna use, uh, you know, the REST API or the, you know, or the bulk API. So that kind of information you should know. Um, you know, it's about a custom user interface. You fairly need to have a you know good understanding of JavaScript, and not to you know to the ex extensive level, but at least you should know you know what JavaScript is all about, error functions, you know, and bit of knowledge about classes, right? So you need to have a bit of understanding in CSS, right? Which is pretty basic. If you do not know CSS, you can take a course. There are a lot of uh, YouTube courses out there, you know. It will take you probably three days to learn. It's not too difficult, right? Visual Force, Advanced Visual Force. Like I said, I'm not pretty happy they're enforcing Visual Force in a certification, and yet they wanted to kill the, you know, put a kill switch on the on a Visual Force, saying you should focus on, you know. I mean, I do believe that you know some of Salesforce certification needs to be tidy up, right? Because I don't know. I mean, because they're too busy, because they've become too big. So, you know, they just leave it as such, which is not really great in my opinion, right? So I believe that, you know, if, if they don't want to promote Visual Force page for whatever reason, they should slowly, slowly take it out from the course. I don't mind they're asking a few questions because you do have existing Visual Force product out there. And so, you know, it, it will be good to know Visual Force. So that's, you know, but that being said, right, um, if they are strictly enforcing on LWC, then they slowly... Uh, take these features from the certification. That's my personal opinion. And the same goes with the Aura component at all. But the thing with the Aura component, if you have worked with the Aura component, you might know that, that there are certain things which LWC is not supporting at this stage. So Aura component is a great choice. But when, you know, but that being said, you know, Salesforce is trying to bring, you know, most of the features from the Aura component to LWC. So knowledge of Aura, LWC, you know, will be, highly beneficial um, so this is about the visual force page uh, best practices about the security sales for security is very important right you should know the concept like bit sharing without sharing you know and that's that's kind of pretty basics to me but and in the use of uh, profiles and roles and kind of things right complex sharing models like declarative and pro, you know, programmatic programmatic methods you know, when to use with sharing, with not sharing, like I said, right? And what happens if you use the sharing within uh, within a uh, without sharing block? So um, you should have fairly decent understanding about it. And Apex SOAP, REST, and web service, you should know how to consume a web service or a SOAP, or you should know how to create a custom Apex web service or a SOAP, or you should also know how to uh, generate a credentials for them and give to the third party, right? So... And you should also have a fairly good understanding about the asynchronous process, right? Like a batch operation, queues, future methods, right? And how to schedule a class. And the best practices for developing, uh, you know, error handling. Error handling plays a very important role. I have seen code uh, in my life, especially in the Salesforce space, where people don't use a damn try catch. And I just try to understand, I, I fail to understand. How are you going to capture the error if you don't use the try catch, right? This is not a really great practice. So uh, you can use your custom exception if that's what you uh, that's what you're after. Um, you can use an exceptional error handling framework if you know, and if you've used one, that's fantastic. If you haven't used, if you have only used, uh, you know, out of box basic, you know, try catch, you know, your own custom object, that's that's good enough, as long as you understand the concept of error handling, right? And then you need to know the trigger. Uh, you know how to write a trigger. You know one of the thing with the trigger, right? I mean, there are a lot of frameworks out there, and I talked about the frameworks, right? And if you're interested, I have 
covered about the trigger framework for four trigger frameworks so you know it's up to you if you wanted to implement right i'll put the link in the description anyways right so don't worry about it so you should have fairly understanding about trigger um and then you know knowledge for just just right so just you know if you wanted to write a test cases for lwc you need to have a knowledge of uh, just right uh they didn't ask about selenium so uh, don't worry about it and the large data volume which is very important right how do you handle the large data volume how do you solve the skewing problem what are skinny tables uh, we're going to talk about all of these kind of things right it's pretty things going to get really exciting right i'm really excited to teach you guys this course this is fantastic right the first of all the reason why i like it because you know i like to i, I find every opportunity to you know get my hand dirty on salesforce coding space because i love to code right you know, it doesn't matter, right? You know, I work as an architect. It doesn't matter that, you know, I don't want, it doesn't matter that, you know, uh, uh, at times, you know, I don't get an opportunity to code. But whenever I do, I try to, you know, make use of it. So, okay. So now let's talk about exam, right? You can do online, okay, if you wanted to take it from home. You know, these days, unfortunately, due to the COVID thing, um, you know, most of the test centers are closed which is understandable. You can, you know, take it from home, which is even convenient, right? Uh, you can take it whatever time you want, right? So based on the schedule, um, the passing score is, uh, you know, 70%. It's pretty, not too bad. It's higher than an architect code though, right? If you take integration designer 67, but this is 70, I understand because it bands, right? Um, so you got a 60 multiple choice question, and 120 minutes right so 200 bucks usd uh to take the test if you fail you can retake it for 100 bucks um so you can uh these are the you know super badges which they expect you to do it so apex developer guide so uh, just go through it if you wanted to you know uh you know about lightning web component guide and other stuff right and these are the outlines of exam Right, sales was fundamentals, five percent, right? You, which is pretty cool, right? You talk about uh, using base system, sharing objects, you know, history objects, meta, meta objects, multi currency, general objects, which is cool. Um, we're gonna talk about it, right? So when when I actually get into the course next time, uh, demonstrate the knowledge of localization features, uh, you're right? How to affect coding, uh, then talk about data modeling, which is six percent. Right, um, which is pretty obvious, right? Data modeling, then process automation, uh, which is, I'm not surprised it's 20% because it plays an important role. Okay, um, so it talks about triggers, you know, so-called query. Um, yeah, then user interface, is usually to build the components, right? And the best way to write a component, scenario-based questions around component or a component, lightning web component, uh, visual force page and then talk about performance which is important in my case uh, in my opinion sorry um, so and integration which we're going to look at it right and mostly in form of uh, Salesforce connect and outbound messaging and testing which is very important and um, because it's the thing is that right whenever you deal with any kind of custom code right I'm not it's good to write a test case. Unit test always helps to find out issues at a very early stage, right? Because if you don't use unit tests, you might assume things and then uh, it's not really great, right? Then you have debug and development tools, right? Deployment tools, right? So you can use, you know, usually Visual Studio Code is the best place. Um, you can use pipelines if you wanted to use CI CD. Well, uh, we'll see if you can cover that, right? That's not really a scope. Uh, for this course, but I'll try to see if I can use an Azure repo to demonstrate how to create a, you know, CI CD pipeline to push the code from, say, Scratch or to um, a sandbox or a developer org in my case. So, right. So this is pretty much about the uh, the course content which I wanted to talk about. Right. I hope you guys are excited. Right. Because Platform Developer Two is an amazing certification. Uh, test your, you know, deep, deeper uh apex and uh lwc uh or component skills and also other aspects of salesforce as well and i believe that um if you're going to appear for 
any kind of uh, system architect, then to having a platform developer tool will really, really going to help, right? So that being said, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about in, uh, today. And the next episode, we're going to talk, uh, get deeper into the course content, right? And I'm going to start talking about um, Salesforce fundamentals, right? I do understand that you might say, oh, I do know Salesforce fundamentals. That's fine. I just wanted to cover everything for the sake of completeness of the course, right? So, so stay tuned. And you guys have a great Sunday. Adios.